Welcome to Pepperell and Fuchs Basic Training for Photoelectric Sensing. You will learn about the technology of photoelectric sensors and common applications for this product. The review questions in this presentation will help you apply your knowledge about photoelectric sensors before you take the test. Definition of a photoelectric sensor, a device that detects a change in light intensity. Typically, this means either non-detection or detection of the sensor's light source. The type of light and method by which the target is detected varies depending upon the sensor. Powerful, photoelectric sensors offer the longest sensing distances, surpassing other sensing technologies such as inductive, capacitive, magnetic, and ultrasonic sensors by up to 300 meters. Lightning fast response times allow faster line speeds. This means less waste and more cost savings for the user. Versatile, from the smallest housing sizes to the largest, from durable plastic housings to heavy duty stainless steel, and from diffused mode to retroreflective, photoelectric sensors offer solutions for applications in any industry. Cost effective, high reliability and long range sensing capabilities at a fraction of the cost of other technologies. A photoelectric sensor operates by emitting modulated light. That is, the light is quickly pulsed on and off, the timing being controlled by an internal clock or oscillator. The receiving element, most often a phototransistor, collects the return light and internally evaluates the amplitude. If this amplitude meets a predetermined condition, a signal is given to the output element, instructing it to switch its operating state. Like a light switch being turned on, the output of the sensor is analogous to the switch and the load, shown in the diagram, is analogous to a light bulb. The main components of a photoelectric sensor are the transmitter and receiver. Transmitters are predominantly either an incandescent source or an LED. Most modern photoelectric sensors, however, use an LED as the transmitter. LEDs transmit light much like an incandescent source but do not give off heat and do not have filaments like an incandescent source. An LED radiates less light than incandescent, therefore modulating the LED's light boosts its power. This modulating or switching the LED on and off at a predetermined frequency increases its intensity and life while reducing power consumption. This signal is stronger than ambient light and can be seen from farther distances. Receivers can consist of a phototransistor or a photodiode. They are both commonly used receiver elements. The receiver is modulated to the same frequency as the transmitter. This means that the receiver is also instructed by the oscillator to turn on and off in the same timing sequence as the transmitter is being turned on and off. This ensures that there is very little time for other sources of light to interfere with or false trigger the sensor. The LEDs most commonly used in the construction of a photoelectric sensor operate in either the red portion or infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Infrared LEDs are the most efficient transmitters and can be driven by large current pulses. They have a high power output and are used to obtain longer sensing ranges compared to visible red LEDs. Visible red LEDs are the most common and most economical LEDs in use. This is due, largely in part, to being able to see the light spot with the naked eye, allowing the user to easily align the light beam to the object to be detected. Laser light sources are a subcategory of visible red and are used in the detection of very small parts at long distances. Lasers have a very tight light beam that is strong and concentrated, providing a higher degree of efficiency and precision than standard visible red LEDs. Ease of alignment is also dramatically improved compared to visible red LEDs. But for each benefit a light source may have, there is at least one limitation. Again, infrared LEDs are very efficient, meaning more light is reflected from the object of interest rather than absorbed. This makes them particularly suitable for applications where the object of interest can vary in color and the distance required for detection. The most significant limitation with infrared LEDs, the emitted light cannot be seen by the human eye, 
making alignment extremely difficult. Compared to infrared LEDs, visible red LEDs are less efficient. This causes a significant increase in sensitivity to objects that vary in color and a decrease in the sensing range. Even so, because the beam is visible and relatively easy to align, they are used extensively, driving down the cost and increasing the availability. Compared to standard visible red LEDs, laser light sources offer better efficiency and improved sensing ranges. But lasers also have several limitations including higher cost, decreased operating lifetime, limited temperature range, and the potential to cause damage to the human eye after long-term exposure. Measured in lumens per square meter or lux, ambient light resistance is a specification denoting the sensor's ability to ignore light at the receiver which did not originate from the transmitter. A high resistance to ambient light is critical. Without it, nearly any source of light could interfere with the operation of the sensor. This includes sunlight, fluorescent lighting, incandescent lighting, as well as other photoelectric sensors in the area. Another important aspect of photoelectric sensor operation is the ambient temperature. Typically, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the temperature range that the sensor must operate within under working conditions. Excess gain is a means of measuring how powerful a photoelectric sensor is at various distances. Excess gain does not have units of measurement, rather it is a ratio defined as the amount of light at the receiver versus the amount of light required to change the output state. The characteristic response curve provides users with a graphical representation of the light beam pattern. Due to the nature of light, the beam is symmetrical in three-dimensional space, although it is shown in just two dimensions. These graphs are simple guidelines and should not be used as precise values, but they can be used as a means of estimating the sensor's light beam diameter and lateral switching points. Many photoelectric sensors offer the user external operating controls and or external inputs to allow for further customization of the switch point and switching type. For example, a very common means for reducing the sensitivity of a sensor is to include a potentiometer or push button. This potentiometer or push button can be adjusted by the user, either increasing or decreasing the sensor's switching threshold. Another common adjustment is a light on dark on switch. Similar to a normally open, normally closed switch, this feature gives the user the ability to change the output behavior of the sensor. More on this shortly. Other means of providing users with more flexibility of the overall operation of the sensor include external control inputs. For example, some control inputs provide an alternative means of selecting the output behavior of the sensor. Rather than providing a physical switch or potentiometer, an external wire that can be connected to a power source or PLC card may be preferred. This prevents unauthorized users from adjusting the sensor once it has been installed in an application. Rather than using the standard convention for describing the outputs as normally open or normally closed, most photoelectric sensor manufacturers specify the output behavior as being either light on or dark on. For most people, this method is more straightforward and easier to understand. Because photoelectric sensors are available in such a wide variety of sensing modes, through beam, diffused, retroreflective, etc., the terms light on and dark on were introduced to better define what the sensor's output is doing in the absence or presence of light. These terms apply only to photoelectric sensors. Light on means the sensor's output is only enabled or on when it receives light, otherwise the output remains off. For diffuse mode sensors, when an object breaks the light beam, the output goes on. For retroreflective and through beam mode sensors, when an object breaks the beam, the output goes off. Dark on means the opposite. When light is received, the output is off. The sensor's output is only enabled or on when it is dark or when it receives no light. See the figure below for further explanation. For diffuse mode sensors, when an object breaks the light beam, the output goes off. For retroreflective and through beam mode sensors, when an object breaks the beam, the output goes on. 
Photoelectric sensors are available in many shapes, housing styles, and with numerous light sources and output types. This translates to tens of thousands of possible combinations when trying to select a photoelectric sensor. But because photoelectric sensor operation is based upon only three basic sensing modes, understanding the fundamental principles of each sensing mode provides a greater understanding of all photoelectric sensors. These principles can be then applied to any photoelectric sensor regardless of the shape, size, style, etc. One sensing mode type is diffuse mode. In diffuse mode, a sensor emits light that is reflected at various angles by an object back to the sensor's receiver. Another sensing mode type is retroreflective mode. A retroreflective mode sensor emits light that is returned back to the sensor by a retroreflector. When an object obstructs the light beam back to the sensor's receiver, this causes the sensor's output to change state. The last basic sensing mode is through beam mode in which the sensor's transmitter and receiver are in two different housings and an object obstructs the beam to cause the output to change state. Diffuse mode sensors have both the emitter and receiver elements in one housing. Light from the emitter is directed back to the receiver by the object. The object reflects some light back to the sensor and scatters the rest. The object is detected when the light at the receiver is above a specified threshold. Diffuse mode sensors detect objects solely on the energy or intensity of the reflected light. If an object is in the right spot and is reflective enough, then it will be sensed. If not, it won't be sensed. As shown here, the intensity of the reflected light is highly dependent upon the characteristics of the object. This means that the sensing range of a diffuse mode sensor can be affected by several factors, including the color, size, and reflectivity of the object. Even the surface texture and finish can affect the sensing range. Simply put, larger, lighter, or shinier objects reflect more light and therefore can be sensed at a greater distance. Conversely, darker, duller, and irregularly shaped objects generally absorb more light, therefore limiting the detection distance of the sensor. Benefits of a diffuse sensor are that it is a one-piece system and does not require a reflector or a through-beam emitter-receiver pair, and it has the lowest cost and installation effort compared to other sensing modes. Limitations are the sensing range is limited and highly dependent on the characteristics of the object to be detected, and the few sensors have the lowest reliability as compared to other sensing modes. Example applications for diffuse sensors include cost-effective presence detection, material overhang detection, presence detection of passing totes or cartons, counting products for palletizing, and detecting open flaps on packaged cartons. Some common terms found on the data sheet for a diffuse mode sensor are shown here. The detection range of a diffuse mode sensor is the minimum and maximum distance for a reliable and consistent detection of a reference target and this reference target is a 90% reflective white test card that is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters in size. Another common term is the black-white difference. This is the difference in detection distance using a 90% reflective white card and a 6% reflective black card under the same conditions. For diffuse mode sensors, the black-white difference tends to be significant. For example, the diffuse mode sensor may detect a white colored object up to a few feet away but keep in mind, this will not be the case when detecting a dark colored object. Rather than a few feet away, the dark colored object may be only detected up to several inches away. Diffuse mode sensors have several special variations. These sensors have been designed to overcome some of the limitations associated with diffuse mode sensing. Convergent sensors have a fixed focal point to provide better reliability as compared to basic diffuse sensors. Divergent sensors have a wide light beam that is very sensitive to minor differences in received light and are suitable for clear object detection. Background suppression sensors detect objects up to a designated cutoff point and ignore objects beyond. They have high reliability and a very low dependence on the object color. Background evaluation sensors utilize a fixed background, examples conveyor machine part, as a reference and also have a very high detection reliability. Similar to a diffuse mode sensor, a retroreflective mode sensor will have both the emitter and receiver elements contained within a single housing. But rather than evaluating the intensity of the light reflected back from the object, 
light from the emitter is directed back to the receiver by a reflector. When an object breaks the established beam between the sensor and the reflector, the object is detected. Nearly all modern retroreflective sensors are polarized. Using the same concept manufacturers of sunglasses use to lessen the harmful effects of ultraviolet light, polarized retroreflective sensors have a horizontal polarization filter added to the sensor's optical face. The goal here is not to eliminate UV light, rather polarization filters on a retroreflective sensor are added only to ensure that the very reflective, mirror-like objects are not mistaken as the reflector. The process of eliminating a false reading from mirror-like objects requires that a horizontal pole filter be placed over the emitter and a vertical pole filter be placed over the receiver. And because the goal is for the sensor not to be fooled by a shiny surface, like a shiny aluminum can for example, a specific type of reflector called a corner cube reflector is needed. A corner cube reflector consists of three mutually perpendicular mirrors that vertically polarize the light and ensure that the light will reflect back to the source regardless of its angle. Some benefits of retroreflective sensors are they have long sensing distances. They have high detection reliability regardless of object color, texture, or shape. And they have a lower cost and installation effort compared to a through beam sensor. Some limitations, they require a reflector which has to be mounted and aligned. Also, most retroreflective sensors have a dead band or a minimum reflector distance. Example applications for retroreflective sensors are small bottle and container detection, entryway monitoring, material overhang detection, presence detection of passing totes or cartons, and long range detection of shiny objects. Common terms you will encounter with retroreflective sensors are effective detection range. This is the minimum and maximum distance for reliable and consistent detection of a reference reflector. This is the recommended range that the sensor and reflector should operate within. Not to be confused with the effective detection range. The sensor's threshold detection range is the absolute maximum distance for detection of a reference reflector. Operating the sensor in the threshold detection range is not recommended as many external factors can cause the sensor to no longer detect the reflector. The reflector distance is the recommended minimum and maximum distance from the sensor face when mounting a reflector. And lastly, the dead band is the area just in front of the sensor face in which the sensor cannot reliably detect the reflector because of the emitter receiver separation and the angle the light is reflected back to the sensor. As mentioned previously, a polarized retroreflective sensor requires the use of a specific type of reflector, also known as a corner cube reflector. Pepperell and Fuchs offers a wide variety. They are available in many shapes, sizes, and mounting styles. Retroreflective mode sensors also have several special variations. Sensing mode variants of retroreflective sensors include clear object detection sensors, which reliably detect clear or transparent objects, foreground suppression sensors that reliably detect shrink wrap pallets and some thermoplastics, non-polarized retroreflective sensors, which have higher detection ranges as compared to polarized retroreflective sensors but are not recommended for shiny object detection, and retroreflective area sensors, which have multiple emitter and receiver elements that provide an area of coverage. The last of the basic sensing modes is the through beam mode sensor. Through beam mode sensors have their emitter and receiver elements contained in separate housings. Light from the emitter is directed to the receiver. The target is detected when the light at the receiver falls below a specified threshold. Benefits of through beam sensors are they have the longest detection distances compared to other sensing modes. They also have the highest optical power as compared to other sensing modes and they have the best optical efficiency and highest reliability as compared to other sensing modes. Plus, there is no sensor deadband or minimum detection distance. Limitations to through beam sensors are they have higher costs and installation efforts as compared to other sensing modes. Also, alignment of through beam sensors at long distances can be time consuming, and they are susceptible to crosstalk from similar or neighboring sensors. Applications for through beam sensors include presence detection of passing totes or cartons, long range detection of shiny objects, entryway monitoring, precise leading edge recognition, 
gap detection between materials, and product ejection hopper monitoring. Terminology used with through beam sensors are effective detection range, the maximum emitter receiver separation distance for reliable and consistent detection, threshold detection range, the absolute maximum emitter receiver separation distance. Function reserve indicates when the light level at the receiver is at or nearing the detection threshold. Function reserve is commonly referred to as stability control, excess gain, or weak signal. This can indicate misalignment, a soiled optical face, or the emitter receiver distance is beyond the stable limit. Variants of through beam sensors are Safety through beams, which have redundant circuitry to meet the applicable criteria for human safeguarding. Safety light curtains, which have multiple emitter receiver elements combined with redundant circuitry to meet the applicable criteria for human safeguarding. Automation light grids that are similar to safety light curtains but only approved for general purpose applications. And alternate frequency models that ensure neighboring sensors do not interfere with each other. Fiber optic sensors require both fiber optic cables and a fiber amplifier. Fiber optic cables are simply small flexible tubes of glass or plastic that easily transport light. The fiber amplifier is a separate sensor that houses both the emitter and receiver. The sensing characteristics of fiber optics are similar to diffused or through beam mode sensors. Light from the fiber amplifier is guided through transparent strands within the fiber or cores by total internal reflection. Light travels along the core by bouncing off the cladding wrapped around the core. The outer PVC or stainless steel jacket protects the core and cladding from damage. Benefits of fiber optic sensors are they're compact in design and perfect for applications where conventional sensors don't fit. They can withstand extreme heat and harsh environments as opposed to other sensors. And there is a large variety of different sensing heads available. Limitations are fiber optic sensors have a limited sensing range, and plastic fiber optic cables work best only with visible red light. Plus, you must purchase fiber optic cables and amplifier separately. Example applications for fiber optic sensors would be PCB detection, web detection, small parts detection, IC pin detection, position detection, object counting, and various high-speed applications. Terminology used with fiber optic sensors are Glass fiber optics, a type of fiber optic cable that has tiny strands of glass bundled together inside a stainless steel or PVC sheath. Glass fiber optics can be used with visible red or infrared light sources. Plastic fiber optics, a type of fiber optic cable that uses a light conductive plastic monofilament material protected by a PVC jacket. Plastic fiber optic cables are only used with visible red light sources. Bifurcated, a two-in-one diffused fiber cable that contains both emitter and receiver fibers. Individual cable, separate fiber optic cables used for both emitter and receiver. Fiber amplifier, a special sensor for use with fiber optic cables that houses both emitter and receiver. Bend radius, the minimum radius a fiber optic cable can bend without damage. Accessories used with fiber optic cables are Lens adapters, which change the optical characteristics of a glass or plastic fiber optic head. Typically, lens adapters increases range or changes the diameter of the light spot. Plastic fiber optic cutters, used to cut plastic fiber optic cables to different lengths. Cable adapters, used to connect all 1 millimeter bundle diameter plastic fiber optic cables to a fiber amplifier.